England aren't practicing attack. English journalists and Twitterati are losing their minds. This England squad is mutinous and doomed to failure. Just some of the things the headline writers would have you believe in England this week. Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. I'm going to be with you throughout the championship, so hit subscribe. It's free. Just down there to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. And today I'm going to be looking at this England team and who I think they're going to be selecting to play against Ireland this coming Saturday. Now, where have they come from? They come from Murrayfield, Scotland, and that performance which has just thrown everybody for a spin, England's first defeat in this championship. Let's not forget England started very brightly, dominated territory in possession, scored a brilliant first phase try, 10-0 up, and then frankly the wheels came off a little bit. So many unforced errors, it just made it so difficult for them to get any foothold in the game after that. Errors from very experienced players as well, people that you wouldn't expect it from, people like George Ford, uh, Ollie Lawrence, um, George Furbank with a couple as well. Elko and myself went into that game in great detail. We'll link it up there so that you can go and check that one out if you want to. Now, let's talk about this England attack because it seems to be the only thing that anybody's talking about at the moment. It is uh, stuttering. It is struggling. But I believe there's huge signs for optimism there, even though if we're led to what is, if we're led to believe, if what we're led to believe is correct, <laughs> got there in the end, then they really aren't practicing it too much. I had Phil Greenaway on the podcast last week to talk about it. I'll link that one up there as well. We go into great depth about what we think they're trying to do, where they've come from, how they're going about it, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to deep dive into England's attack or lack thereof, go and check that one up out up there. Now then, squad updates before we get into it. Some good news here for England. Back in comes Alex Mitchell. Back in comes Magic Marcus Smith to add some zip and ingenuity to our halfbacks. Uh, I think everybody's very happy to see them back. Okay, but let's get into this selection because I think out of all the teams in this year's Six, six Nations and maybe every single week so far, this is the one where there's more questions than any other. So we'll start with the forwards. And I'm going to go straight in with the players that I think will keep their spots from last time out. Jamie George, captain, playing very well. It's difficult to judge George sometimes when England aren't flowing. You know, we're used to seeing him show up so often in loose play when England were, you know, on a real good run. You don't see that so much when England is struggling to find pattern, but he's still very quietly going about his work in a very efficient way. Itoji, England's line-out caller, he's not, he's not at the top of his game, but he's doing OK. Um, so I think he keeps his spot primarily, honestly, because he's England's line-out caller and the line-out's going pretty well. I think Underhill was excellent against Scotland. Several turnovers, some big hits. He's looking back to his, his bashing best. And Ben Earl, some people say, not a number eight. Well, the only bit of sort of play that makes any difference compared to any other position in the back row is picking up from the base of the scrum. And his role in the George Furbeck try was absolutely elite number eight player, as far, I'm, as far as I'm concerned. So as long as you can balance that out within the rest of the sort of back five of the forwards, it's all good as far as I'm concerned. Ben Earl playing really well and certainly a good option at number eight as far as I'm concerned. OK, the players that I haven't selected here, the props, I think, are interchangeable depending on who you want to start, who you want to bench and what you're looking for, you know, which strengths at which time of the game. So, you know, depending on what England want to do, I think they could start with either pair. Five and six. Chesham, again, I think is playing well, but we've seen him play better. Um and the Ethan Roots, I thought, had some big carries and some big tackles against Scotland. Um, but both of them really under pressure, I would say, from George Martin, who was excellent off the bench. Looks like he's firing on all cylinders. So he's definitely going to be pressuring for a place in one of those jerseys. Here's what I think. I think England will start with the same props as last time. Genjin Cole, get that scrum off to a good, steady um Steady start. But more importantly, when we get to the bench, I'll explain why I prefer those props coming off the bench. You know, it's it's definitely horses for courses here. Five and six, Martin and Chesham. <clears throat> they could go either way around here. And I think it will depend on what they want from the scrum and associated tasks. 
depending on who will play where. I think they might swap throughout the game as well, potentially. Um, I think Martin's the strongest scrummager there, so I've put him in the number five jersey. On to the backs. And again, we'll start with the play, uh, uh, just one single player that I think will keep their shirt from last game. And it's only Tommy Freeman that I think is guaranteed to keep his shirt. He, I thought, was exceptional in the air uh, against Scotland, which was what he was asked to do more than anything. And he, uh, yeah, he won several balls back um, after after kicks. Didn't do a huge amount of ball in hand, but then England didn't do a huge amount of ball in hand. So it's very difficult to judge him on that. But I think just based on his kick retrieval, he keeps his place. Plus, he's still one of the best all-round back three players that we've got in terms of kicking, catching, running, tackling, defence, everything. I think he's still our best all-round option. So he certainly keeps his spot. Now then, Wolf, across the rest of this England back line, Danny Kerr, big fan, didn't play well up in Scotland. There's no question about that. I think it's very unlikely that he'll start this week, especially with Mitchell returning. Fly half, Ford, Ben Smith, Marcus Smith, Three very good players. Ford was not great up in Scotland. A couple of really uncharacteristic, kind of unsympathetic passes, which he's not renowned for. He's normally just, uh, you know, fluid, um, but he wasn't on that day up in Scotland. Finn Smith did okay off the bench, but missed a critical conversion. Marcus Smith, is he back fully fit? Is he raring to go? And if he is, will he make a difference? Will he actually make a difference to this England back line? Or are they all too a little bit stunted? Is it all too a little bit off key and timing off for even Marcus to make a dif difference attack wise? Who knows? Number 12. Now we're getting into it. Fraser Dingwall started the first couple of games. Ollie Lawrence, I can't remember having a, him having a worse game for England. I thought he was just dropped the ball several times and uh, just bit in for the first Scottish try as well. Very difficult for him coming into a sort of unsettled backline like it is, but he didn't have the best of games. Who else is there? Manu Tualagi. I would have picked him to start against Scotland. I'm not sure whether he's fully fit or not. Hard to tell if you're not in camp. Then we get to some of the more out there options. Freddie Stewart's being talked about, which I think long term could be a really good option for him. His strengths at fullback are elite, world class, but he also has some weaknesses that aren't even international class as far as I'm concerned. So if he wants to be like a real standout player for England for a very long time, I think switching to 12 could be a long-term strategy for him. But not now, not thrown into a game against Ireland, one of the very best teams in the world. Um, I think it would be a massive gamble that should not be taken to throw him in at 12. And Ben Earls, another one that's being spoken about. And again, like I can see it. I could see it working, but don't just throw him in against Ireland. That, that's madness as far as I'm concerned. So for me, it's uh, Dingwall, Lawrence or Tuolangi in, in that 12 jersey. On to the number 13 jersey and Henry Slade is the incumbent. Uh, there's options. Freeman could be pushed in one where he's played very successfully for Northampton. Um, and then looking at 15, Burbank or Stewart, basically. I don't think they'll... Put Marcus Smith there, although that is also an option. I think it'll be, yeah, Furbank or Stewart. OK, here's what I think. I think Mitchell comes back in at nine. He was the first choice before he got injured. And I don't see any reason for that to change now. As I said, Kerr didn't have the best game last time out. So there's no trouble there. Now, I think based on things that Borthwick have been saying, based on how I think England are best suited to try and win this game, I think he's going to give them all another shot, you know. I just think that we're going to have to gain field pressure, uh, field position through kick pressure and kick retrievals more than anything else, more than fluid attack because our attack isn't fluid that at the moment. So I think the presence of Daly and Freeman on the wings are key to that strategy, and I think they'll continue. I think also key to that st strategy is George Ford at ten. I mean, I'd, I'd rate him so highly as a player. I love him as a player, and I just think he can't possibly play. Um, as sort of non-existent as he did again up in Scotland. Oli Lawrence is a confidence player. I think even though he played poorly, I think to pick him again shows you've got confidence in him. And another couple of weeks training in this setup 
gives him a chance to really go out and perform. He was a star centre at the start of the Premiership season. So I'll give him, I, I back him to go and do it again. Henry Slade, key linchpin for the way we're trying to defend and also plays that first receiver role so often from set plays. And he's very good at it. Didn't do it very well against Scotland, but he is over the course of a long time. He is absolutely amazing at it. So <clears throat> Slade keeps his place there as well for me. And then Furbank or Stewart. I look at Ireland and I see a team that wants to keep the ball a lot. They're not kicking the ball, contestable kicks all that much, which is where Stewart really comes into his own. I say we go with Furbank. Again, it helps with the balance of the back line and attack as well. And we saw him try to be that extra playmaker, that extra ball player, a bit of extra zip compared to Stewart. So I think he keeps his spot too. OK, on to the bench. And this is what we go with. We go with Theo, Dan, Marler and Stewart. Uh, Dan and Marler, self-explanatory. And I like Stewart from the bench because he is a, he is a physical ball carrier. Now, he has been stripped of the ball a couple of times and turned over a couple of times this championship which is not ideal but it's also unusual for him he's usually very good at it so I'm going to back him to come off the bench and provide a bit of oomph and go forward Ethan Roots takes a number 19 jersey with three second rows starting we don't need a specialist second row there look for him to bring up come on and bring some another smash of physicality from the bench and then I am going to go with Cunningham South Care and Marcus Smith very Quincy very, very Quincy. Lots of spark, lots of pace. I think if this game goes the way it's likely to go, England might be behind by the time they come on the pitch. And if you want somebody to turn around a game, if you want players that believe they can turn around a game, you want players that are play their club rugby for Harlequins. So Danny Kerr coming off the bench to win his 100th cap. How amazing would it be if he came off, either created or scored the winner himself? You could see him doing the big football celebration down the touchline. Up in the crowd, who knows? That's my wish for this Saturday. Will it happen? Who knows? But along with those three, even more spark probably than all three of them, Faye Waboso based on his performance up in Scotland. And again, if the game goes the way everybody expects it to go and England are losing with half an hour to go, I expect a lot of these guys to come off the bench with the remit to go and just shake things up, play what's in front of them and take it to Ireland and try and win the game. Wow. That is a long one here. Lots to talk about with this England side. Huge amounts. What do I want from them? I just wanted to see them continue making progress. There's definitely been progress in their defence. They've they've really shook Scotland up at times. You know, there's still errors. Of course, there will be the way they're defended. But I just wanted to see them trust it and keep on progressing there. Set piece has gone pretty well for England. They haven't been uber dominant or anything like that. You know, like England sort of perceive England to, uh, or sorry, people perceive England to be. But they have done a very decent job at set piece time. That's got to continue. And then again, in attack, I just want them to trust what they're trying to do. They haven't got much structure about it. They haven't had much practice with it, but they just need to back each other and trust that the pass is going to be in the right place if they're going to have any chance of troubling Ireland on Saturday. There we go. That's what I think. But what do you think? Do you think Bar Borthwick's going to throw the baby out with the bathwater? Or do you think he's going to give all these guys another shot to really show what they can do in an England shirt under this new coaching regime? Let me know in the comments down below and I will join you there for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind. And please, if you haven't already, can you hit that subscribe button? I'm getting so close to a major milestone now and you can really help me out. It's free. You just have to click that button right there. It's where my yellow logo is. All right. Amazing. Thank you so much. And you can watch that one next. And also, don't forget to get out and play.